Howdy, with this video, I want to go over just some of the finer points of quoting uh, using MLA formatting. Uh, response paper number four is due tomorrow. This is, uh, I'm doing this on Wednesday, January 31st. Uh, so, re response paper number four on Hawthorne and the three poems are due tomorrow. Uh, yeah, as you're reading some of this stuff, you may not like this highly symbolic, overwrought, romantic kind of uh, uh, literature. That's okay. Uh, all the symbolism's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, you're going to get them something much different with Stephen Crane and Kate Chopin for next Monday uh, when we get into the realists. So sometimes it can be a little frustrating if you're kind of stuck in literature you don't particularly care for. Uh, but hang in there. We're going to be, we're going to be looking at different types of literature uh, throughout the rest of the class. Uh, some people like me just they love Hawthorne and the symbolism and uh, love to get into that. But uh, uh, response paper number four is due tomorrow, uh, Thursday night. Um, again, response number five will be due next uh, Monday night. We're probably going to do a discussion board for that one, get you talking to each other a little bit more instead of just writing stuff for me. Uh, but I want to do these response papers so that we could uh, get good practice with MLA formatting and you can be, feel pretty confident with it when you hit the first essay, uh, which will be coming up in a couple of weeks or a week and a half, I guess. Um, for response number four, uh, some of you have had trouble with the, just the basic formatting. Make sure everything's double spaced. Uh, you want your last name and the page number up here in the header, and that page no that header should be counting your pages. Um, so when you go to insert the page number, make sure you hit and click on page number, not just header, and that'll start counting your pages for you. Uh, I'll show that in a previous video. Everything should be double spaced once. Your name, my name, class section number. I don't have the section number there, but and the date. Uh, make sure you have a title for your response paper. Um, short story titles will be in quotation marks, just like that. Um, generally, if you want, when you introduce a short story, you want to introduce the writer as well, just to refresh the reader of what's going on. Uh, but for quotes, uh, for long quotes, which are four or more lines with MLA formatting, uh, generally you want to introduce a quote with a full sentence, uh, then use a colon. Uh, then you want to give the quote, and it's called, often called a block quote because you block the whole thing over. Uh, you're going to tab it over one more time than the uh, paragraph indent. Uh, to do that, um, you can use these little arrow buttons here. This will move the, if you highlight the whole thing, you can move it back and forth. Uh, you can also do that in Google Docs as well. It has the same function. Uh, but you give the quote, it should be word for word. For word. Uh, if you're going to change something, like here there was the word it in the original, uh, and the writer wanted to clarify what it was, which was removing the birthmark. Uh, so she put that in brackets, and you use brackets to show an addition or a change to a quote. Uh, then uh, the writer took out, uh, said Georgiana or something like that, and she didn't feel like she needed that in her quote. Uh, so she uh, took it out and put the three dots, those are called ellipses, those show an omission to a quote. Uh, otherwise, quotes should be word for word, directly from the text. Same thing down here. The three dots show something was taken out of the text. Looks like a couple of sentences. Uh, but that's that's how a long quote works. It's tabbed over twice. Uh, you want to introduce it. Don't just you know d dump a long quote in the middle of a paragraph and you know not not introduce it or talk about it. Uh, all quotes get an introduction. All quotes should um, get some of your discussion there. Uh, if you're quoting from our textbook. This one right here. <laughs> uh, you're going to uh, cite the page number. If you're using an online source, you may not have a page number. Uh, but if you're using our book, make sure you have the page number in the citation. Uh, you can put Hawthorne in the citation if you want to. It's pretty clear uh, that's who uh, who I'm quoting from or who the writer's quoting from. So it's not really needed. But if you want to put it in there for security, that's fine. <coughs> but especially if you start talking about two different texts within one paragraph, then you definitely want to put the first word on your work status page in there, which will be Hawthorne. Um, for a short quote, uh, you can introduce it with a full sentence or a partial sentence. Uh, if you do a partial sentence like this, uh, you want to use a comma. If you use a full sentence, you want to use that colon. Uh, but for short quotes, you use quote marks. Um, after the quote's over, you give the citation with the page number. Uh, if, you're on, if you're using an internet uh, version of the story, you may not have a page number. Uh, then, of course, the period after the citation. Uh, so short quotes get quote marks. Uh, generally, long quotes do not. 
unless you're starting to do multiple uh, paragraphs of dialogue or something like that, then you might have a, the, the quote marks in there. On the work status page, uh, if you're quoting from our textbook, you want to start with, and pretty much it, no matter where you're you know, getting this from, you're going to start with the writer's name. It's Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, so Kelly J. Mays on our textbook, uh, she is the editor. She is not writing these stories. Uh, she's merely, well, not merely, but she's collecting them, um, putting them into the anthology. And this, this is called an anthology. But even in an anthology, you start with the, the author's name. So author's last name, author's first name, uh, title of the story in quote marks, title of the anthology, uh, again, is italicized. Then you put the editor. It's going to be the 12th edition. Uh, actually, it should be the shorter 12th edition. Fix that there. There we go. Because there's actual 12th edition. That's a longer version. Uh, Norton's Publishers, published in 2017. And for anthology entries, you want to make sure you have those page numbers in there. Um, theoretically, if, when I see a quote, I can go to this page in this, in this book and go see, make sure you're quoting accurately. Uh, but that's what the works cited should look like. Uh, if you're getting it from online, then you're going to put the uh, web address, probably the website and the web address, uh, in the citation. But that's basically what it should look like with the short quotes and long quotes. Generally, if you're summarizing literature, you don't need to, to uh, put a citation there. They're generally not required for uh, especially famous works of literature. Um, but short quotes and long quotes certainly do. Uh, and again, if you're going to change anything within a quote, use those uh, brackets to show changes, the ellipses to show omission, and you'll be okay. Um, that's basically, I want to just do a quick review there. Um, we'll talk to you later. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.